Review time! Uh, some Sunbeam LED bulbs. Uh, what's so special about these is just simply that it's a multi-pack. I bought it at Costco. It cost me $12 for three bulbs. That's only $4 per bulb. It's just a good example of the end point of the LED bulb, bulb market for the consumers, which of course is a super inexpensive product. So uh, I want to see what I get for $12. I can't imagine uh, much of a bulb sits under there for such a low price. Okay, uh, yet again another construction. Uh, the real trouble with LEDs is they're fairly directional and you want to push the light out into a more pleasing pattern. Uh, obviously a diffuser dome here which helps and then uh, another piece of uh, plastic here uh, which obviously causes the light to be pushed to the side. So another unique assembly. Haven't seen this one before. Alright, well here we are looking straight down on the emitter array. Just remove the little diffuser. First, this interesting bit of industrial archaeology is you can actually figure out who actually made the uh, circuit board here. This is a UL marking number and it uh, goes to a database. And let me just pop up the listing. The Examen LED Board Electron Tech Company. Now, I've been tearing down LED bulbs now for, what, about a year? Maybe a year and a half? Um, and it, it's never the same vendor. There must be a tremendous number of small companies in China who uh, are producing this type of material. So it doesn't appear that any sort of big company has emerged yet as a winner. Uh, some fairly dreadful soldering. Let's uh, we'll insert a picture of the solder here. Pretty globular. Um, problem is that it's always done by hand, and of course you get lots of variability. And it becomes a failure point. Uh, let's uh, take off the emitter here, open up the base, and see if we can see what's inside the power supply. Well, so here's a surprise. Uh, such a cheap bulb. I didn't expect this. This is a uh, black goop. It's called potting compound. It helps uh, spread out the uh, thermal peaks and uh, can actually result in a uh, longer service life for a bulb. Wasn't expecting it at this sort of very bottom price, but uh, there it is. So, um, interesting. Okay, well here's the main control circuit. That uh, potting compound peeled off really nicely. It's a, a reworkable type. Single-sided circuit board, which means there's no traces on this side and uh, just traces on the bottom side. That's generally a reliability concern because you don't have any VF for the lead. So, the solder joint tends to be a bit weaker. But again, no surprise with a low-cost bulb. A little smoothing capacitor here on the DC side, and uh, we can see our first uh, UL number. A point to another company called the Quanzhou Jintan Electron Circuit Board Co. Uh, again, another uh, vendor I haven't run into before. So there's just tons and tons of circuit board vendors in China these days. The market really hasn't consolidated. A, a very simple topology. Uh, this is a transformer. This is an NPN transistor. If I flip it over, you can't see any uh, integrated circuits, so it's a, a discrete solution. Uh, let's see, all the standard parts though. Um, there's a uh, full wave rectifier here. And you come onto this side here, there's a few. So um, it, is, it appears to be quite credible that it has a UL listing. It seems to have all the right parts on it. So uh, not too bad. The capacitor, which of course is probably one of the bits that uh, will tend to fail over time, uh, will have a temperature rating on it. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. 105 degrees centigrade. Uh, not the best, not the worst. There's certainly a, there's a grade below called 85 degrees and then of course there's several grades above but um, not the worst. And maybe that's the theme here of the bulb actually. Um, I've certainly seen much poorer constructions and uh, for actually a little more money so uh, not too bad. Okay, dimmability test. The packaging said the bulb is dimmable but only select dimmers. Of course that's standard uh, that terminology because there's obviously some dimmers LED bulbs don't like at all. I have a really older dimmer here which I like because it's pretty in instructive to me as to whether it, the bulb will work in most situations. This is a really old dimmer way before uh, LEDs were invented. But um, it's fine actually. The bulb is uh, fairly adequately dimmable. It's interesting though you can start to see the uh, the darker spot here on the top of the bulb. Uh, I presume that's because of the nature of how they constructed that little um, diffuser which is pushing the light out. It keeps light going from the top here. So that's sort of an unusual thing. And in terms of um, flicker, I just uh, will turn the bulb right up and uh, put it really close to the camera. And uh, what I'm looking for is a banding phenomena. And you can see banding sort of uh, rolling by. And that's basically a, a beat frequency and the aliasing between the shutter speed and the, uh, the bulb itself. Um, if you're thinking it doesn't look too bad, actually, uh, you'd be right. Uh, but it is there, so uh, let's just, uh, throw it on the oscilloscope to get some sort of more uh, quantitative sense as to uh, the band, uh, the flicker for performance. Okay, flicker test bulb here, of course, uh, solar cell looking at it, and that produces a trace on the uh, oscilloscope. And uh, it's actually a very, very small amount of flicker. The, uh, the baseline uh, is down here, and uh, just a little bit on the top here. So the bulb looks actually quite decent from a, a flicker perspective. 
Okay, polar light distribution graph. Uh, this is a circle center here. The further you go away from the center, the greater the light output. What this is telling me is that uh, the bulb produces most of its lights on the side, and that makes sense given that what we saw there with the diffuser and the dark area at the top of the bulb. So uh, that's actually not a bad pattern. Uh, if you have a lamp shade, uh, generally speaking, you want the light to fire with the sides, and then it gets distributed evenly around the room. So it's a, a perfectly usable pattern. It's a little bit flatter than uh, you'd expect. Um, it's one of the classic problems in A-shaped bulbs, and one reason as I tear these down, uh, even to this day, they always have an internal construction which is always different because it's kind of an unsolved problem with manufacturers trying all sorts of uh, neat techniques. Uh, so my watt hour meter is claiming about 9.6, 9.7 watts, the packaging claim 9, so that might be a bit optimistic. Uh, this definitely isn't the absolute uh, industry leader in terms of uh, lumens per watt, though. Uh, it's still not uh, too bad. And uh, the power factor is almost unity. So, um, interesting. I thought this teardown would be of a, a pretty modest bulb, but actually I'm uh, fairly uh, impressed. Especially for what I paid for it. This is actually a pretty credible light bulb.